Hello, this is meant to be a kind of overview of how loose coupling might work in Angular. I say might work because there are other ways I'm sure that you can implement this. Um, so loose coupling, um, it's a way of communicating between components without actually calling directly a function in one component and calling it from another component. And there are various ways in which you can do this and in Angular we've got two tools that we can use. One is called Broadcast, which dispatches an event downward through the scope hierarchy, notifying any listeners that, are, that it's kind of downstream, that are children of the um, component that's doing the uh, sending, the broadcasting. We've got the reverse of that called Emit, where dispatches, uh, Emit dispatches an event upward through the scope hierarchy, so children can communicate with parents. And both of these work. I mean, that's the method by which the information is sent. Uh, how it's received is by using an Angular directive on, which actually registers an event listener. Now, um, with controllers, um, as you know, controllers uh, display information, or rather they act as an intermediary frequently between services that, that have the model the controller handles the logic and the information that's in that controller is displayed via a view. Um, and we can nest one controller inside another. So if this is a snippet of HTML where I'm using an HTML5 section tag and I've got a controller called index controller and notice on mine I'm using the prefix data hyphen in front of the ng hyphen controller. So here I've got the outer controller index controller and in the middle of that I've got another controller which is my course controller. Both of these of course are uh, part of the tutorial that you're following. So one controller is inside another. So in this particular case then the index controller which is the outer controller, the parent, can broadcast uh, messages down to the course controller which can then register a listener using that on um, directive or, or method problem. More accurately. Similarly, the course controller, being the child, can emit a message up to its parent, the index controller. So in that kind of context, things can be fairly straightforward. But frequently, controllers aren't nested one inside the other. Frequently, controllers are siblings, and they just sit side by side. This is certainly the way that I've got things set out. Uh, it, it, you've got things set out if you're following the tutorial. So in this particular context then, um, controllers can neither broadcast nor emit uh, directly to each other because they sit next to each other. Uh, in other words, we've got in this example an index controller which links via a scope to a part of the index.html. Uh, we've got a course controller again which links via scope to uh, its view, in this case a separate course list HTML and then again if you're following the tutorial we've got a third controller a course student controller with similar kind of properties and they, they sit side by side and so they have no way of communicating with each other however uh, all scopes which act as the link in a way between your controllers and your views have a root scope and a root scope in a way is like a parent to all so by using root scope we can broadcast down to children because all of the um, controllers are in a way children of root scope. So a good way to achieve this is by actually using a service. We could use a factor I guess as well but in the examples that we're working through we're using a service. So we can use a service to uh, encapsulate information storage and sharing of that information between controllers. In effect what we're doing here is we're implementing a pub sub pattern, publish subscribe pattern and you can search on the internet for what that's about if you don't know. Um, controllers then using this can publish information to the service which can then broadcast to any listeners that are registered using this root scope. So controllers can subscribe, I listen to messages from you know, their siblings, other controllers. So let's have a, a quick look at what that might look like. So in this bit of code I've attached to Angular a module called Course App. This is all the same as in the example you're working on. And then I've simplified it somewhat um, 
So I've taken out a, a, a service that you've already got, but I'm creating a service here that I'm calling application data. As you did a descriptor, if that's what it does, it, it stores data for the whole application. Um, so the first um, argument of two service is the name of the uh, service, which is application data. And then it's comma, and then in a way it's like a constructor function. The function that will be called when we get the application data instantiated and the function has passed in i'm passing into it dollar root scope which is a reference to this root scope that all the scopes have as their parent and that kind of pre-exists as part of angular i don't need to declare it as a dependency and then inside this function i'm creating a variable that i'm called shared service which is an empty object and I'm also creating inside, attached to that as a property of shared service, another property called info, which I'm instantiating or initializing to an empty object. And then that sh shared service object, I'm attaching to it something called publish info, which is a function I'm defining. The function will accept two parameters, a key and an object, because the idea is, is that I can pass in a word, say course, uh, as the key and then as the object I can actually pass in the course object so I need to store that in some way so you already know that the best way to um, um, reference an object by its name when that name is actually a variable is not to use the dot syntax but to use something that looks more much more like array syntax so I'm storing to this dot info um, in other words that object that I created shared service dot info I'm storing into that this dot info square brackets and the key that was to be passed in and I'm assigning to that particular object the object that was passed in um, and now I'm using root scope the um, parent scope that we passed in and I'm calling its broadcast method and I'm saying okay it's you're going to broadcast something that I'm calling system info underscore I mean you could call it whatever you wanted uh, so I'm calling it system info and I'm attaching to that word system info whatever the key is. So if someone's passed in something called course, it will broadcast system info underscore course. And I'm taking advantage that broadcast actually can pass a second parameter, which is an arguments parameter. Um, in this case, I'm passing the object that was called in. And then that's the end of the constructor. And so I just return the shared service. So how can we use that? Well, uh, let's look at one of the controllers, uh, the index controller in this particular example. So again, I've got Angular, I've got dot, and then on the next line I'm chaining to that, a call to module. Uh, by the way, I always tend to do ang the word and then dot at the end of the line to stop any possibility of semicolon insertion, which JavaScript can do. So to my module course app, I'm then chaining a call to controller the index controller and as you, you know, I've gone through this before as part of the tutorial you, you pass in the dependencies in this case scope comma and then the application data in other words the name of my service that's sharing information and then a function um, and it has as its uh, parameters the scope and something I'm calling app data rather than application data um, and that's what it is it's application data and um, those are just in a way variables and that they have as their value the things that you've passed in the dependencies so they can you can rename them if you want to call them anything you want so I'm attaching um, a property to called title to scope which I'm giving the information I'm giving the uh, value course information and then um, I'm setting up scope course title which I'm setting to be blank and then I'm setting a listener saying okay uh, scope on um, and so this particular listener is listening for um, the event system info underscore course and then the next argument is the handler it will uh, use to if it receives such a, a piece of information um, when you broadcast the first thing that you receive is actually the event so that's my EV variable and then I'm since I'm making use of the possibility to pass an argument with it that's what that second comma course is. Course will become the argument in this particular message that's been received. So inside the function handler, I'm reassigning scope course title to equal 
the course, which is an object, its property called course title. Okay, so that we've got set up a listener that's listening for a message. So let's move to the next controller, which will actually send the message. So this particular controller, again, I've taken out a lot of code, so this isn't kind of you know, complete code, but it will help you understand the bare bones, I think, of how we publish information. So inside my function, which is my kind of um, constructor function, is the way I always think of it, uh, I'm saying app data dot publish info, passing as the key course, just an empty array. So when the program first starts, that course title, it will publish the fact there's an empty course title. Now imagine that this controller is has got a view somewhere and that someone clicks on a row of data uh, and that row of data then calls a method called select course. So select course will be called when a new course is selected from the user interface. The key line is app data dot publish info. App data is my service and I'm calling that method called publish info passing as the key course, comma, and then the course object. So if we go back to our service and remind ourselves, the key then is the word course, and the object in question is that course object. So that gets stored into this.info with the key of the word course and the object. And then we broadcast system info underscore and the word course and that object, which then will go to controller number one, because that controller number one is listening for any event that is system info underscore course, which is precisely the event that's just fired. Um, and its um, listener, the function ev common course will get fired and the course title will be stored. So it's a simple way to have a pub sub pattern with loose coupling between sibling controllers. I hope that's helpful. Thanks a lot. Cheerio.